We've had CX thought leaders from all over the place help us tell the story of the four things you've got to get right to get a flow state friendly culture in your company. This week, we look at the last two keys to getting flow state right and the cost of getting them wrong. Hey everyone, welcome back to 40 Billion Reasons. I'm Max Israel. So this is the third and final piece in a three-part set that we've been doing, looking at a concept called flow state. In episode eight, we talked about what flow state is, how it works, how essentially you can get better uh, customer experience and better employee experience by making work harder. And there are four things you've got to do to create a flow-friendly culture in your company. In episode nine, last week, our friends at Verizon, Primera Blue Cross, and IBM helped us explain the first two of those things. This week, in episode 10, we'll look at the second two things you've got to do. And they are help your people to get immersed in the job and you've got to create a challenge for them. And if you're just joining us and you've missed episode eight or episode nine, don't worry, you can see all past episodes of 40 Billion Reasons at customerville.com slash vlog. So before we get uh, started today, I wanted to share a viewer comment from CRM strategist and thought leader Esteban Kolsky. Back in episode eight, I, I made the point that getting your teams engaged in flow, right? Not acting robotically, helped them fend off the threat of being replaced by a bot. In his LinkedIn comments, Esteban wants to turn that sentiment on its head, right? He points out that while there is a threat to the worker, the real threat in this deal is actually to the employer, to you. Esteban's an analyst and analysts are contrarian about pretty much everything. So I thought we better check it out. And it, it turns out he's right. Take a, take a look at the uh, unemployment number since 2010 in the US, UK, and Germany, and you'll see what Esteban means. They've all uh, plummeted to about 4%, which is to say pretty much full employment. It is an incredibly demanding hiring environment out there, which is very difficult. And as we were putting the finishing touches on this episode, my Wall Street Journal uh, carried this article, which sort of helped underline Esteban's point for him. Towns all over the US are actually handing out money to get you to move there to take those jobs. So Kolsky's right, get your teams into flow. Make their jobs challenging and interesting. We'll get ready to have a very hard time filling those jobs in the future. All right, let's get to it. Let's look at the second set of two environments you've got to create if you want to have a flow-friendly culture in your company. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi talks about the importance of people getting immersed in their work. And this is hard. Many of the technologies we use are actually incredibly distracting. And honestly, some jobs are just more conducive to this than others. I wanted to see if we could find a couple of examples where companies plan for success by helping their employees kind of clear the decks mentally and start with a sense of focus. And I got some really good examples from two very smart folks at Microsoft, starting with Terry Kingston. And Terry said she actually had a couple of examples, one from inside Microsoft and one from outside. So I asked her, what you got, Terry? And I, I love this example. I wanted to hear more, this idea of starting with a customer's story. What's the net effect of starting these meetings with uh, a customer's story? My guess is that it does exactly that, that it helps keep things uh, focused, priorities straight. This actually really uh, works, by the way. Last week, we interviewed uh, Curtis Kopp from Primera Blue Cross. You guys may have seen that. And I happen to know that at Primera, um, for all of their important meetings, they actually reserve a seat at the table uh, for the customer. They have t-shirts with the words, I am the customer printed on them. But they pull over the seat back so that that person's at the table and always represented. And it reminds everybody kind of who they actually work for. And it, Turns out that Terry has a healthcare story of her own, something called the huddle. And I, I think I have to admit, when I first kind of heard this, uh, I was a little bit incredulous. I almost fell out of my chair. I love the idea of the huddle, the checking in, but that last part, the song, really, Terry? It does sound genuine. This to me sounds genuine, and I freaking love this idea. What better way to get your teams kind of focused up and ready to be dedicated and immersed in their work? This, by the way, we all do this for our workouts. Why wouldn't we do it at work? 
Then another uh, CX thinker I really respect at uh, Microsoft, Steven Sorensen, uh, brought up a point that's really close to home for, for companies like my own, for like companies like Customerville, because we're a software company, right? Um, he makes this point that a huddle is actually really great, but not all uh, teams work together in the same place or even the same time zone. Steven, we're, we're an agile shop too, by the way, so I actually see this as well. Um, this is a trend we're seeing over and over again, and maybe you guys out there are seeing it too, depending on what kind of business you're in. Uh, this is absolutely true. They're, they're really, the, the way that we are working really is truly uh, shifting. While our teams aren't together physically, maybe as much as they used to be, the connection created by the technology is actually, if done right, can be a really great tool to get people immersed in work, which is this key element of flow state. Steven, Terry, thank you for your time. You guys are awesome. So this brings us to the fourth and final condition you've got to create if you want to have a flow state friendly culture. You've got to create a challenge. And you know, there are actually a million ways to do this. But as I uh, listened to your stories and your suggestions, I was particularly taken by the challenge that keeping people up to speed on like training and on an evolving subject matter kind of provided exactly the type of challenge that we needed. This is right in the bullseye, right what Mihai Csikszentmihalyi talks about. This idea that people want to be challenged and then they want to be tested. And that's fundamental. It's something you need to be engaged. And one example I just love came to me from Mike Olson, who's president of Trek Bicycle Superstores. I'm a diehard cyclist and I just love Trek. I love the brand, I love the product, I think they're amazing. Uh, Mike's an amazing guy. He sells more Trek bicycles than anyone else on the planet. I, I think they're actually the number one Trek uh, bicycle retailer in the entire country. So they're a big, big deal. And they do a wonderful job. And, I, and so I asked him, how do you do that, Mike? And I, I actually knew we were going to get this. I, I actually kind of walked right into this. Like I knew he was going to talk about training, just like on the bike, training, training, training. But what's interesting to me is how uh, quickly he takes a minute to stop and talk about the relationship between like the, the subject matter expertise and social skills. And this is actually something he's said to me many times over the years, this idea that he'd rather have someone with really good social skills who can find the customer's level than someone who's like a bike genius, right? Uh, which I think is is pretty cool. So they're, de they're definitely huge on training and that's how they provide this challenge, but it's not just technical training, it's also the idea of the emotional training. This is pretty cool, it's pretty important. And just think how fast uh, bike technology evolves. Carbon fiber, disc brakes, there's something new every season and they've got to constantly stay on top of it. And just as he, by the way, this is all even before you start talking about electric bikes, which are growing like crazy for him. And it's a whole new area of subject matter that they've got to master. I asked him to quantify this and look at this number. This is actually a lot of training, a couple hours a week, and then quarterly multi-day workshops. That's that's pretty incredible. I kind of joked to him that I thought um, there was, he was like putting people in a master class that never ends, and, he, and it's kind of true. Naturally, I asked him for some photos too. Look at these guys, aren't they great? As we were putting this episode to, to bed though, I was talking with Ruth Crowley, and, and Ruth is Vice President of Customer Experience Design at Lowe's. Um, and one of the things Ruth does just very, very well is she, she really gets the emotional component of all this, you know, both in terms of the customer experience, but also the employee experience. And she, look at this, she kind of takes me to task on this, which is actually kind of awesome, right? Uh, look at what she says, that in some cases the customer actually knows more than the employee. And she points out that, uh, that there's this kind of natural tension that as leaders we have to alleviate. She's really kind of echoing, right, what Mike says, make sure you're investing in helping people with the, the social skills of it. This isn't a contest to make the smartest person in the room, right? You want somebody who's well informed, but also who's very graceful in handling this interchange of information. Thank you everyone who contributed uh, this week. Terry and Steven at Microsoft, Mike at Trek, and Ruth at Lowe's. You guys are amazing. Next week, a bonus episode. Now that you guys are all pros at Flow State, we're gonna take you behind the scenes at Customerville and show you a little bit about our Flow State secret sauce. I think I can pretty much guarantee we do something here you've never seen before, but you'll be the judge of that. Next week, episode 11, Loving the Language Barrier. Hablaremos de las clases que hacemos juntos en Customerville, en inglés, español y francés. Oui, de temps en temps c'est dur, mais nous adorons des défis. And most of all, we do them together. See you next week.